Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back for another week of the Max Potential Habits podcast. You all know that I love to bring on experts in their field. And today we have a really powerful expert who's been in the real estate industry for almost 30 years. So in 30 years, there are a lot of ups and downs in business. Um, Chris Prefontaine, uh, who is the coach, founder, CEO of Smart Real Estate Coach. He is someone who has a wealth of experience, a wealth of knowledge. Not only has he built a successful real estate investment portfolio, he also coaches others how to do it. And what's really cool is that I work with a ton of people on their team, their associates who they are teaching how to do a real estate investment in, there's so many words I could use, (laughs) in powerful ways because not only do they show them how to do it, they help them along the way. And getting to work with this community, it's a family feel, it's people who are powerful, driven, focused, and really connected to the community. So I am completely honored to get to be a part of their group and also have him on the podcast today to share his wealth knowledge with us about business building, real estate investment, wealth building, mindset, all of those things that we all love to think about here on the Max Potential Habits podcast. So welcome to the show today, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for putting a big explanation point on that aging of 29 or 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's wisdom. It's, it's a right. collection of wisdom. I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. So, so share with us. Um, I want to know how you got into real estate in the first place. What, what happened there for you? Yeah, I, um, I grew up in a family company with uh, my dad, but it was not real estate. Uh, he actually owned a welding supply business, totally separate from anything oh, yeah. I've ever done. But while I grew up in the business, he would build his own buildings and then lease them back to his company. So I was kind of around that and saw how he did that and created that mm-hmm. on his own with no education. And then he just hung out with people that did like land flips and engineering land. And that's how I, I was exposed to it. Cool. Wow. And so then what, what was your first deal like? I'm curious. Uh, we actually did a deal. I'm trying to think how old it was. We just got married. So I was 20. Uh, we did a deal where we bought a uh, split level home, but it had an extra lot next to it. And because I was used to him doing that, a friend and I subdivided the lot, kept the house and built a duplex on that extra lot and then sold each side of the duplex. It was on a golf course. That was my first ever deal. Uh, looking back, it wasn't that bad of a deal. It was a pretty, good, pretty wow. cool deal. Yeah, good start into, the, into practicing. Yeah, that was like 91 talk about dating myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You're young. (laughs) You've got, you've got at least you're halfway through. That's it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, okay. I'm curious something because you've had so many years of experience in building this business that you're in today, how many twists and turns and pivots have you made along the way in terms of big moments where you recognize like, wow, this element of something I've been doing really worked and you notice what didn't work, and then you pivoted in a new direction. Talk to us a little bit about that, because I think it's so powerful for the people listening who might be in the beginning stages of building a business, or maybe they're even farther along, but they're questioning, shifting, or they're wanting to leave their nine to five. Yeah. What's that process like when you shift from in one, when you're in one industry, shifting to another, and or one place where you realize it's time, it's time to make a change? Yeah, unfortunately, when you said that, what comes to mind is a couple of the major curveballs that we'll talk about. But on, the, on yeah. a positive note, on a positive note, I remember leaving the family business, you know, the welding supply business. Actually, I, I didn't leave voluntarily. He sold the company to someone who then fired me. And that's another whole story. Oh, wow. So it was a big corporate company that came in and, and um, very quickly they said, see you later. And my father was like, what'd they do? Were they fired you? Like I, so that was a little odd, but it allowed me to go to real estate. That's what was the bridge. So I remember driving home that day, not feeling at all like, oh, that's really sucked. I I remember driving home saying, this is like, I am totally free. I think Mm -hmm. I got like a month severance. It wasn't a lot, but I had a couple homes in the construction then. So I I knew I could just go crush it with that. So that was really cool. I I remember that like it was yesterday. No one's ever asked me that. And then um, when we started building more and more, the market turned on us in the early 90s. And then I went off and started a brokerage. Now, as a builder, you're against, not against, but you're like different philosophy than realtors, right? Totally different. Yeah. So then I went off and got my realtor hat on and bought a realty executives franchise, like a Remax or uh-huh. yeah. realty executives. So then we built that with one intent, sell it in, in five years. We did that. I sold it to Cobalt Banker in 2000. So that was a major 
issue then. It wasn't enormous, like a quarter of a million dollars, but at my age in, in 2000, in my experience, that was pretty cool experience. Yeah. And then um, that led to not so great because that led from doing my own deals and coaching people to the great debacle of 2008, the crash. Yeah. And that was, so that was the negative one I was referring to. That was a major, major bang on the head, uh, learning mistakes. And then that causing what we do today, which is buy everything on terms without using banks and not go back to that spot in 08. So I just fast forwarded that fast, but I don't know if you want me to go back to any one of those. Yeah. I mean, I think what is really powerful, you know, I bring on a lot of different types of people. Some people have been in business for a few years and some people long-term. And I think it's always powerful to hear how up, how the trajectory is in a straight line up. You know, it's this constant fall down, get up, face new challenges, look at new obstacles. So in my mind, I, you know, something that I think would be valuable for you to share with the audience is what it takes in the moment of crisis. Yeah. What do you do in the moment of crisis? Yeah, I, I think back, someone asked me this recently in a show and I didn't realize that the two times that I just mentioned that were kind of rocky, second time really rocky, guess what? I didn't have a mentor or a coach. The only two times my, in my entire career since college, I did not have someone I could go lean on and go, hey, is this right? Like, am I, what, what do I do here? And so I, I lost like that board of directors, so to speak, or that, that sounding board. And I lost it because I was getting too cocky right before that. I was getting too mm -hmm. comfortable. And then didn't have a coach. And since, gosh, college, I've had either personal, nutritional, business, someone to, to lean on. So those times, I didn't have one. Uh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that was the issue. So I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Uh, well, well, what, it, what you're saying is have a coach. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, well, obviously, I, I agree with you completely. And I think, do you think that that is associated with the reason why you decided to set up smart real estate coach the way you have, because something I hear from the people that I get to work with who work with you are how powerful it is to have someone holding your hand along the way. And, and, and when they, when I say holding your hand, it's not that you're doing the work for them. You're teaching them the way, but you're there for them to teach them in those moments where they are uncertain. Even you bringing someone like me and a mindset coach, you know, you go, okay, what does my community need? They need a mindset coach. So I'm going to bring somebody in and then you're there to teach them the deals. And I know you do other work with them as well, but it's that, you know, I'm that inspiration to be a coach. How did, is that how that happened for you? Uh, it actually, yes. Um, so a couple of things. One is uh, we have a local Navy college here mm -hmm. and a kid had called me and said, he knew I was doing deals without coaching yet back in like 13 or yeah, 2013 or 14. And he said, can you coach me? I'm going back to civilian life. I'm done good with my tours in Afghanistan and I want to be coached. That kicked it off but I've always coached or trained in some capacity. So yes, I, we're on a mission, as you know, from working with the team and with Zach, that we just want to, there's so much garbage out there, not just real estate, a lot of coaching areas, as you know, yeah. that just want to sell stuff and okay, go off and do your thing. As you know, we don't do that. And I just, I'm, I'm still like totally passionate about come in, sure, but let's work together hand in hand, let's lock arms so that when you do hit hurdles, we're there. Uh, like when I hit hurdles, I told you I didn't have anyone. So when you hit hurdles, you, you need and want someone there and that, yeah, that's, that's driving us for sure. Yeah. 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 The community, the, the camaraderie. Um, I'm thinking about for you, what kind of the magic of what you've created when you started out with smart real estate coach, did you set out to, ha I'm sure you've had a lot of twists and turns along the way. How long is, has smart real estate coach been around? I Officially I 2014, know. I started coaching. We incorporated okay. in the beginning of 15. Okay. Uh, and we've done like, I don't know, double growth every year almost, you know? Yeah. It's incredible growth. So <laughs> first I want to ask what, you know, I talk a lot about mindset, money, manifestation, all those kinds of things to help people build their businesses. Why do you see real estate as a powerful wealth building vehicle? Uh, well, look, if you compare it to literally anything, a job, no brainer, but compared to like the stock market, let's use that actually, cause that's a hot button for people. Okay. Yeah. So I put, I put a thousand dollars, let's say $10,000 in the stock market. It can go to zero. Everybody knows that like that stock can go, they can go out of business yeah. in real estate. The home's not going to zero. Okay. If it, if there's a crash, it's not going to zero. And so it's a great long-term wealth builder always has been. We, as you know, have institute like inserted different cash vehicles now and ongoing to, to help bridge to get to that wealth. But I think it's by far the best wealth vehicle out there, yeah. especially when you can do it without banks and borrowing on your own cash. I mean, that's the key. So, so yeah, I think it for all of the above reasons, it's a wealth builder. 
Yeah. Yeah. And your team, how many in your, what are you at per month now in terms of deals that your whole, the smart real estate coach community creates? The whole group. Um, mm -hmm. Every month it goes up. We're at like 12 or 15 deals a month right now as a, you know, as a community. Yep. Yep. That's, That's pretty incredible. powerful. That's a lot of real estate. It is. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about mindset pieces through. So we talked about, you know, when you hit those challenges and not having a coach, so the power of having a coach, what are some of the tips and tricks that you do on a daily basis to stay in the game? Because I know in building a business, especially when you're doubling every year, yeah. lots of stuff comes up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so share a little bit there. Uh, personally more on the personal front. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Discipline comes to mind. Uh, I know that's an overused word sometimes, but I'm talking about routines when I think of discipline, like mm -hmm. daily routines. I know you're big on that. So, so if I personally don't start the day with a routine, my routine, I'll give you in a second, I'm off. Like something's off during the day because mayhem happens. Like today I get on the show with you and I said, look, we, Zach and I have been back to back all day, like literally one minute in between. That takes a lot. So in the morning for me, it's it's either yoga, working out, either one of those, and then it's some meditation and journaling. Just a quick gratitude. Those are key for me to get the brain set. Yeah. Um, in, in every single day, not whether it's good, bad, or otherwise. And then on the corporate front, we just make sure we like attach ourselves to great coaches like you. You're in the community. And also on the more macro level, like scaling coaches like yeah. organizations, like elite, elite uh, entrepreneur. So that when we hit the hiring and the firing and the speed bumps, we know where to go. We go to that group and go, you guys are the same sales. What do you do? And so we make sure we have that sounding board on all fronts, personal team, individual, and uh, on a corporate level. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in, in my mind, I see it as this, this holistic approach to go, I've got to have myself in order, then I've got to have the team in order, and I've got to be forecasting for the future. So what's next? And then always uh, accessing coaches who are going to pull you up in terms of the scaling. You know, you go, you're a little bit ahead of me, and we want to get to the multi-million dollar mark, then we've got to ha access the tools to get there and, and put those systems in place before we're even ready sometimes. Yeah. And I know that you coach on this, but the whole drunk monkey and, you know, can I do it? Will it work for me syndrome? I, we all have it. If we say we don't, we're, we're just kidding ourselves. Yeah. So we do. So we, I have it from the scaling standpoint and then I go to them and go, can, can we do this and how? And then yeah. on the personal standpoint, you get it when you hit new plateaus. Of course you do. So I think yeah. that's super, super important. That's why you're in the community with us. Yeah. I mean, the, I'm the curious. What, what's your biggest what, what's the biggest battle you face personally? Like your biggest Most fear? definitely, without hesitation, the 08 crash lives still because nobody wants to go back to that. So as we scale, there'll be that day or that morning or that one minute where I go, oh, but is it going to be bad again? Or is it, did I make the wrong decision again? And that's when I call up the, you know, the coaches or, or I talk with the team, you know? Yeah. And yeah. as you know, Zach's CEO now, my son-in-law, and, and just been invaluable. Uh, all the team, the whole team is like that. I feel so, so grateful to have the team. And he's been a very important piece to that. Yeah. T talk to us a little bit about that because, you know, I know a lot of people listening, maybe they're solopreneurs or maybe they're building their business and starting to bring in new people. And I know that your company is all family members, right? Mostly. The, the, mostly. The okay. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. What's it like to work with your family? Uh, it's great because uh, I'll tell you why it's great, but then I'll tell you how it came together. Cause I, it, people say, did you have a plan? Like, did you like orchestrate this thing? So it's great because there's the trust factors through the roof, right? Yeah. Um, we have, we do set boundaries. I don't know if Zach's talked about it, but like we used to live, including Zach, Zach, Nick and Kim and I literally like two houses apart. <laughs> and so we'd leave the office and go home and, and yell across. Like we never saw each other. How was your day? Uh, and laugh. And, and so we keep it separate. Unless it's positive, we don't bring it home. If it's positive, great, let's talk about it. But if it's negative, just leave it at the office. That's kind of a rule and it, it's fine. Uh, Kayla and Kim keep us in check with that to make sure it stays at the office. <laughs> um, on the planning front, everybody goes, well, you must have like planned it because you got everybody in a key spot. No, I mean, it was me. Then it was Nick part-time back in like 14. Then as you know, Zach's story, Zach and Kayla were in like the, the bar in the, in the tourist industry. Yeah. And said, Hey, you know, is there any room in the company at the end of 15? I think it was. And I said, yeah, I mean, there's no like salary and if you want to come in and do deals, we'll see if we can make it work. And then as we all grew, they grew into roles that they love that each other don't even want the other roles. Like it just organically went that way. Yeah. Uh, for example, where Zach is running his stuff and Nick's in this buyer side of things, like it just organically happened. It's, it's really cool. I think. 
It's interesting what it makes me think of as you being a powerful attractor to and clear in your vision of what you wanted to create long term and the right people just came in the right way. And it's really powerful when you put people in positions where they're inspired. Obviously, it seems obvious, but a lot of people don't think that way. You know, when you're hiring somebody to delegate a task that you don't love, you want to find the person who loves that task. And it's, sometimes it's hard for you to think of because yeah. you don't enjoy doing it. <laughs> so I, I think, agree. No one else is going to enjoy doing it. But people love, you know, you're always looking who would be inspired to get up every day and do this task. And that's who you want to be delegating to or growing with. So, you know, I see part of your you know, I haven't gotten to have the hand, the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so smart real estate coach is running an event in April called business scaling. And I'm going to be there running a part of a workshop. So I'm really excited to get to meet everyone. Psyched. Yeah. Very psyched. It's like, I loved it to sense the energy of the team and I already yeah. have a really good sense of it, but I'm really excited to be there in person and meet everyone and see how that works because it's, you know, I often think of a business like a family anyway. Um, you know, it's kind of that family structure and so, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool what you guys have created there. Oh, you're with, think about it. You're with the people in your business, like more, Zach kids around say more than his, his wife. I mean, you are, yeah. you're with them all day long. And so you gotta, you gotta have fun with that and, and work on that. And we keep, I keep saying how important it is to have you on board, but just for any business owner, you and I talked before the show a little bit, any business owner, like the skill sets are all there. They're available. The coaches are all there. They're available. What's, what, what dictates, I think, how fast or slow someone goes in any business growth or scaling or success just if you're a solopreneur is the space between our ears. That is no question what stops or propels us. And that's why we've brought you in and some other, some other experts. And I think it's cool for any business owner to, to really put some importance on that. Yeah. 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 You're making me think it's funny because, you know, you being in real estate, it's like the most valuable real estate is your brain. <laughs> you know, mm. the space between your ears. It's just it like, is. if you have that in check, sky's the limit. You, yeah. you can find the people that you need to find to make the things that you want to have happen, happen. But it's only if you see yourself in a certain way and believe that you can do it and then take action in that direction. I'm curious, what would you say to your 20 year old self? Like, you know, what would you wish you could say to your 20 year old self? 20 year old self. Yeah. Um, I, two things, I guess. Uh, depends on when people ask me this question. I come up with a different answer because I think that's neat just mentally as people progress. But one would be um, no limits because that's mm -hmm. mental. Yeah. Right? And nice. if you can tell people when they're young, that's cool. And second would be, I hate to beat a dead horse here, but the second would be that success leaves clues. So, so it doesn't matter. You want to go open a hot dog stand. You want to go do real estate. I don't care what you want to do. Find someone that is, is doing it still, not past, and that will be open to helping you, whether that's free or whether that's you know, a paid coach. If you do those two things, if someone told me that day one, I'd be like, cool. I can almost pick anything. I can succeed in it. I just got to go find someone to help me. Well, that's yeah. pretty simple if you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, awesome. Okay. What's a favorite book you're reading right now? Um, I just finished. It's right here underneath my water bottle for the third time, the weekly coaching conversation. Hmm. If, okay. you're, if you even have one team member or your kids or <laughs> coaching like us, that's a cool book. We sent it to all our coaches last week. Oh, awesome. I haven't heard of that one. What, who's parable. the author? Uh, Brian Souza, S O U Z A. It's very short. You can read it in the weekend. It's a, it's a little parable. Cool. Oh, I'll check that one out. I love good book recommendations. Okay. Um, I, I want to ask you, you know, because there's people listening who might be looking for businesses, what's the entry into working with you? Because I know you have a really incredible system for helping people, you know, who know nothing about real estate step into being successful investors. So what's the entry point for people working with you? Uh, we're big on free, as you know, like I, to my earlier point of find a mentor and find a business you want to do. Well, okay. So now within our niche, I say, okay, if you want to look into us, look, in, look into it for free. We have a free webinar and go on YouTube, look at all the stuff there so that you get to the point where you go, that's what I want. It's not, oh, I'll try it now. It's, I know I want to do that and I'll commit. I know if you do that, I'm going to have great success with you. So go look at the free webinar for, you know, and, and spend, if you can deal with me for an hour, then you go look at that <laughs> webinar and you're, you're golden. Awesome. To listen to the full episode, head on over to nfacoaching.com, hit the podcast link, and it'll take you to all of the full episodes. And go ahead and leave some comments. I'd love to hear from you to know how these inspirational interviews, tips, and tools are impacting you in your life and business. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on any of the Max Potential Habits episodes.